Hello and welcome to this video where I will be introducing you to the latest HMI technology by Siemens, the Simatic WinCC Unify platform. I can write a hefty book about this topic as there are too much to talk about this powerful platform, but I'll try to highlight the key topics to help you get started with this interesting HMI system. So make sure you follow along until the end of this video and without further ado, let's get started. So here is what you will see in this video in the next few minutes. After an introduction to key features of the WinCC Unifa platform, we will unbox a real HMI panel and I will walk you through the steps required to prepare your device for the first project including the hardware and the software components. In the demo project that we will develop together, we will visualize some data and ultimately we will implement some, uh, some advanced features by writing scripts in JavaScript for changing the HMI style, in other words the theme, and logging some data into the data file. So I have a lot of interesting topic for you, make sure you follow along. Most of you already know, Siemens has been in the HMI and SCADA business for years and offers several solutions for a small to large applications. WinCC Flexible, WinCC Advanced, WinCC Professional or WinCC Open Architecture or OA are just some examples. But we can call the Simatic WinCC Unified the latest HMI or SCADA technology offered by Siemens. WinCC Unified Platform is based on native web technologies and unlike many other HMI platforms in the market, which are only available for Windows-based machines, WinCC Unified is available for installation on various uh, platforms, including uh, normal PCs or virtual machines, industrial edge devices, indoor and outdoor comfort panels, and even PLCs. Yes, you heard it right, a light version of the WinCC Unified, which is called VOFTing or VOT, is directly hosted on a PLC memory. In other words, you have your HMI and your control algorithm or program running on the same device, which is a simple PLC. How cool is that? All HMI screens in WinCC Unified are web-based. That means they can be viewed from any device regardless of their operating system, such as Windows, Linux, Mac OS, or even Android or iOS mobile devices. It is important to mention that each WinCC Unified PC station offers two integrated web clients. This feature allows remote access for operation and monitoring without any additional cost that is included in your base purchase. For sure, the number of clients can be extended if required. Exciting news is, the programming language used in the Simatic WinCC Unified is JavaScript, which is a highly flexible language and is easy, is very easy to learn. I personally like this feature a lot because traditional HMI and SCADA platform normally use their own scripting language based on VBScript or C. That means there are not enough online resources available to learn how to implement some advanced functions when it's needed in an application. We will see how easy it is to use JavaScript in the last section of this video when we are working on the hands-on demonstration. So stay tuned. Thematic WinCC Unified is highly scalable, from a single user system to complex and distributed applications. It acts as an integration platform to link data from production with data from the IT world using the feature called our Runtime Openness Data Interface on the server side. In other words, the Runtime Openness provides access to online and historical data and of course the alarms for the exchange of data with external systems such as any database or an IT system with .NET or C++ programming, which is very interesting and very useful. The Unified even supports GraphQL, which is well known and popular in the IT world. This feature has been added to the WinCC Unified ecosystem uh, since version 18. 
It means the IT and OIT integration is made easy with this feature, which enables fast web-based access uh, to data and messages. This is something uh, comparable to the traditional uh, REST APIs and so on. It's more popular for the IT people. We as an OT people, we normally don't deal with this kind of um, integration. But as you see, things are changing as we are, everyone is talking about Industry 4.0. The OT and IT world are merging and the GraphQL is a great asset for that. Using this feature, the requested data can be easily and securely exchanged with IT application over networks with programming environments such as, you know, Python, which means Jupyter or even Node-RED with some graphical drag and drop and simple programming. Thematic VNCC Unified projects are configured on a uniform basis in the proven TIA portal environment. Anyone has worked on the Siemens uh, automation system knows that TIA Portal is the main programming platform for PLCs and configuring VFDs, HMI and SCADA and so on. That means you can create and test all the key parameters for the visualization easily and efficiently in the TIA Portal. It's worth mentioning that there is a web-based uh, version of the engineering station available to configure projects on edge devices as well. Okay, I think we had enough chit chat and uh, went through the theory and why you might consider using VNCC Unified platform for your visualization uh, project. So let's get us straight to the exciting part of this video, unboxing a unified comfort panel and creating an advanced project from scratch into a portal. I'm not just going to open a prepared project, so we are going to build the project from scratch. Don't worry if you're uh, feeling a little tired because this is going to be a thrilling ride. Okay, so I have a unified comfort panel here with me. As you can see here, it comes with a solid box. It's a label on it and you can easily cut this label and let's see what's inside the box. Okay, maybe I can show you over here. That's what you will see. Bunch of screw and nuts for mounting the HMI panel. Some cable management and also the connector for the power and uh, you have two CDs uh, which are open source software and license condition okay that's for the license condition because Unified platform is using the open um, basically open source software and also the Linux as the operating system so these are necessary to let you know okay and apart from that we get three other loose items maybe I can show you over here the first one is just a small pamphlet just gives you some uh, basically general information in different language German Chinese English uh, and as you see over here it shows you what is a control panel and basically the basic information the other piece, uh, I believe this one is for the cable management because you can just attach it on your, your panel for kind of uh, tidying your cable, especially the, the Ethernet cable for profinet communication. And also another piece of paper which shows you how to install it, how to mechanically install the panel, what's the best practice and also the wiring diagram over here as you see how to power it up and how to connect it to the ground and also just a basic introduction how to connect it to TIA portal to start doing the programming I'm not sure you can see it. okay so after these small items we'll go to the main item which is yeah nothing else in the box 
Uh, that's the panel itself. This one is a seven inch that I just unboxed, but I have another one over here. I'm going to work on that one. And uh, in just a few seconds, I'm going to zoom into this panel and I'm going to talk about what are these ports over here and overall what, what, how the physical uh, device looks like. And we are going to power it up and also uh, I'm going to talk about the operating system a little bit. And in the next section, we are going to write a simple program for this one and then an advanced program. So make sure you follow along, don't get tired yet. Okay, after uh, unboxing the um, HMI Comfort Panel, let's look at the actual physical uh, device and see what uh, ports and what kind of physical components exist on the panel. And then we'll power it up and see how the boot uh, sequence look like and what features you have in the software configuration. So, as you can see here on the back of the panel, you have a label with the information, you have the part number, and different type of you know certification that's, that uh, this unit has and on the back side of course uh, you have this um, SD card uh, lockable let's say lid or protector and as you see here you have two slots for the SD cards uh, so I'm not sure if I can zoom in or focus on these labels over here okay yeah here we go as you see here, one SD card is for the data and the other one is for the system. So what's the difference between these two? The first one, the data is actually used just for, you know, putting your data log, data log file, you know, recipe and those type of things or your custom or user data, let's call them. And this um, SD card can be literally any type of SD card. As, as you see here, I'm just using a regular 64 gigabyte of uh, SD card. And uh, okay, so for the next one, the system slot, you have to use a Siemens uh, SD card. Why? Because this, um, this slot is used for, you know, backing up the program of the HMI or backing up the entire thing or make, makes an image of the panel for disaster recovery purposes. In other words, if something goes wrong with your panel, and you have this um, SD card in this slot, you just simply um, detach it and put it in a new panel and it's just working uh, the same as the older panel. So that's about the SD cards. And let's see uh, what ports this HMI has. Okay, maybe I just will put it this way. And you have these labels over here as well. Oh, let me show it like this. And as you can read over here, the first port on the right side is the, the power supply. It accepts the 24 volt uh, power supply as, as we explained. And you have a serial port for RS485. Uh, and I think in this HMI, it, it also supports RS4222 as well. And you have two sets of uh, Ethernet ports. Uh, the X1, which is uh, this one on the left side, it's a two port um, switch basically. So these two are the same, they, they have the same type of IP address. And the right one, the single one, um, which is called X2, uh, if I'm not mistaken, yes, let me read. Yeah, this one is X2P1, this one is X1P1 and X1P2. So these two ports are, or uh, these two groups are totally separate. They get different um, IP addresses in separate uh, subnets, which is very great. So let's say you, you can use this one and the left one for your PLC or OT network, and the right one for connecting to the internet, which uh, improves the security significantly. Also, you have uh, four USB ports on here. So you can um, connect your you know, external hard drive or USB flash drive or even mouse or keyboard um, if you need that in your application. Uh, so that's pretty much it for the physical ports on the device. And I really like this design for protecting the stick cards. And you, as you can see, you can just slide the right and left. And uh, okay, so let's just uh, power it up and see how it boots up and what you have uh, once you power this unit up. 
Oh, so I'm just connecting the 24 volt here. I'm just turning on my power supply. Um, as I mentioned earlier, uh, this HMI is a Linux space basically. So Siemens has uh, developed their own operating, operating system, which I believe is called Industrial OS. So this is literally is like a PC, a high-end PC for your um, HMI applications. Okay, so here is your landing page once you power it up. If you don't have your basically auto start setup, you will stay on here until you start your runtime. So I just want to stop the auto runtime. Okay, I just go to automatic start. Okay, it's already deactivated because I wanted to show you here. Maybe I can just quickly walk you through to see why, how you use this, um, this menu. So as I mentioned, this is a Linux based device. I don't know the details. I'm not sure if it's publicly available information, but just to know, just to let you know, as you see here, you have different options uh, on the menu bar on the left. The first one is the system properties. Apparently the panel information, you can see uh, what panel do you have. The most important one is the runtime ver version and firmware version basically. So I already updated this with the latest one, which is version 18. And you need to keep your panel up to date and make sure you have the latest firmware to kind of uh, get the most of, out of your HMI panel. And if you just go back, as I mentioned, I'm not going to uh, all the um, pages, maybe I just highlight the most important one. Um, that's how you basically update your panel, the OS of your panel. It's a, you can just download it from the Cyrus website or uh, Siemens Industrial Support website and just put it in the flash drive or external hard drive and you can just uh, open it up from here and then you can uh, basically upgrade the OS of your panel. Uh, the most important uh, options uh, on the next menu, um, of course, the automatic um, runtime start, as I mentioned. You can set it up to start the runtime automatically after a period of time, let's say 15 seconds or 30 seconds. And the most important menu is the network menu or network and internet setting. That's how you set up the IP address of your device for two different ports that I mentioned, you have a, one set of uh, switch ports and the other one, the X2, uh, which, have, which gets the different set of IP address. So as you see here, my first IP address uh, is 192.168.060 and my other port has the IP address of 192.168.3.2. Apparently you can just use the DHCP if you wanna get the automatic, basically, uh, IP if you're connecting to an internet router and so on. So that's the IP address that we are going to use to connect to this device. Next menu is the security, the user management, which is normally um, not being changed or manipulated here because you can just do it in the TA portal for managing your users and who have um, access to your panel. Certificate is one of the main, uh, most important one if you want to use the secure communication to your panel or this panel um, can be used and you know OPC UA server to kind of communicate with other client and so on. You have to import your certificate to be able to communicate. And uh, yeah, the control panel access, you can set up a password um, to kind of avoid everyone to have access to this menu that I'm working on right now because if, if you put this panel on the shop, no, you don't want everyone to manipulate all this setting. And uh, another one, of course, the language date and time, self-explanatory, service and commissioning. Uh, yeah, I think that's an important one as well. So you can have a um, um, backup, you can do a manual backup basically over here. You select the storage, first of all, and then uh, you can just do a backup manual backup of your panel for future restore and as you see here you just assign a file name very easy create a backup you can also set up automatic backup that um, you don't have to go and manually press a button to basically uh, get a backup 
One of the very cool feature of the pa this panel, which I really like personally, is you can install different apps. As you see here, you have uh, some Siemens specific apps such as uh, Cimatic Edge. Uh, Edge is a different word. It's not too complicated. Maybe we will have another separate video for that. But just to let you know, this device uh, supports Edge, is Edge capable basically. You can enable it and you can onboard it IEM um, and you can just use it as an Edge device. And another thing, as I mentioned, this is a Linux based device and that's why you have some general applications such as Doc Viewer. So basically this one is uh, the LibreOffice. So that's, uh, you know, if you work with Linux, you know what's uh, LibreOffice. It's so open source and free version of Office that you can open your Word or Excel and the overall the Office document, uh, Word document over here. And um, okay, just back to the menu. And another one for sure, you have the file browser. I wanna show you here, it exactly feels like a Linux machine, as you may guess. So you have your file system over here, you can browse what's inside your um, USB drive or your SD cards and so on okay and uh, one thing that you may have noticed uh, as you see here this is an um, it, it has an OS like uh, like a normal PC let's say of course it has it, it is an industrial OS but as you see here once you open a new application it adds the application uh, icon on the taskbar on the bottom as you see here uh, I have the file manager or file viewer open and also the LibreOffice. If I just close it, it will disappear from here, like similar to your desktop or laptop. And um, yes, that's about it for this section. In the next section, I'm just going to connect um, to this panel and also I'm going to create the first uh, TI portal project for this panel and then we're going to move to a more advanced project in the unified <music> hope you've enjoyed the video so far uh, at this time we are ready to write our first program in the vincc unified uh, platform for the hmi panel that i just unboxed i have the hmi panel sitting on my desk desk next to me and i have the ti portal software open uh, I'm using version 18 uh, so basically we are going to use the software to write a very simple program for the HMI panel and then we are going to write another program for the PC based VCC Unified uh, HMI so the first thing you do in the TIA portal you just open a new project I just call it HMI panel project 1 just save it wherever you want and hit the create. Okay, so once your project is created, you need to add a new device to your project because your project is blank now. So let's uh, add the configure a device, add a new device, and I'm going to my HMI, Simatic Unified Comfort Panel. I'm using a 10 inch to the programming. So I select my device. Okay, so at this point, my project is created and a, a 10 inch unified comfort panel is added to my project. I just switch to the pro, uh, project view. And as you see over here, I have the panel created in the project tree on the left side. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm just going to open the device configuration. Because we have only one device, there is nothing else in the network view. So we are just in the device view. Uh, the first thing you, go, uh, you need to do is uh, assigning the IP address for your device for sure. And as I mentioned, my device IP address in is 192.168.060. The before uh, writing any program, let's just do a quick compile and download to the to our panel. 
So we need to create at least one screen to define it as a startup screen. So let's do that. Okay, I just created a blank screen. Let's compile the project again. Okay, let's do a quick download. And uh, I know that it is connected here. Let's just do a search. Okay, see that it found the device. Okay, that's my HMI. And I do the load. Okay, the download the screen opens. You just need to do a full download. If you want to start the runtime, you want to uncheck this option. I'll explain in the later videos uh, when we are going to the details what all of these mean. Okay, as you see here, the loading is completed. But right now our HMI is blank. Maybe I can show you uh, one advanced feature very quick. So I can, uh, one of the cool feature of this HMI is you can remotely access it. There is a software called a smart client and you can remotely connect to your panel and you just need to enter the password that you set in your runtime setting. Okay. So as you see here, I have access to the screen of my HMI. This is not a simulation. This is exactly what I see on here on my HMI screen. So as you see here, they are mirrored. If I change anything, uh, the changes will apply on the remote connection. This is good for all of you to see what is going on on the HMI side. So yeah, so right now we just downloaded an empty or blank project as you see here. It's just, there's really nothing here. So let's just go and um, add some object to the screen and see how we can develop our project. So the first thing that you want to do, apparently the HMI is, HMI is always connected to a physical device or if you want to do some internal work, you can just use the internal tags. First thing you do, you just go to your connection. You can add a new connection. And uh, as you see on the list here, um, a lot of options are available for the communication uh, to other devices. It, it supports apparently Siemens S7, 1200 and 1500, the older 300 and 400. It also supports Modbus RTU and TCP IP, as well as uh, Allen Bradley Ethernet IP and Mitsubishi and Omron and apparently OPC UA. So you just select uh, whatever hardware that you want to communicate to. So for now, we don't have any PLC over here. You just delete it. And all we do, we go to our tags and uh, we are going to add a few more, few tags over here. So I just call them tag one, tag two, tag three and maybe another one tag four and uh, yes over here I have my internal tag that means these this information are not passed to any physical hardware or PLC they are just exist inside the HMI panel so after creating your internal tag we go back to our screen and I just want to show you over here how easy it is to create an HMI screen. So on the right side, you have the toolbox. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to add um, a slider. I'm going to add an gauge, and maybe I'm just going to add a numeric display or IO field. So what I wanna do, I just wanna connect this object because right now there is, they are not connected to anything, they just uh, visual you know they're just graphic object so let's just connect them to some tags as you see here simply I can just drag and drop the tags over here what does that mean so any information that is in tag one will be shown on this object and this object and also we can change the value of the tag 
using this object uh, or a slider over here. So we can just do another compile. And you can see still there is nothing in my HMI panel because we didn't, we haven't done any download. So we want to download this project to the panel. I do a full download. I want to start the runtime. And I hit the load. Okay, so this is what I'm seeing on the actual device. And uh, let's just do a quick test. As you see here on this slider, I can just change it the values and you will see the results on the other one and these two are just connected. Okay. So that was a very simple, um, basically uh, project or the hello world project for the unified comfort panels. And as you see, apparently over here, you have many options. You can define your alarms, you can define your logs. You can have the trend view over here and basically show the values in a graph and so on. Okay, so that's really it for the HMI panel. Uh, of course, you can just make your advanced you know, HMI just uh, use different objects. You can just add uh, different, uh, basically, graphical objects. You can add different sliders. You can have clock. You can have push buttons, selector, list view, and so on. And it's just the rest is just uh, working on the project. But the basic is that's how you connect to the device, you configure it, and how you get it started. So in the next section, I'm going to show you how easy it is uh, to switch from the panel to PC-based HMI, which is called WinCC Unified Runtime or PC. And we, we will do some advanced screen. Uh, let's see how we can create a PC-based HMI based on WinCC Unified. It's just as simple as the HMI panel that we just saw. So let's just quickly go and add a new device. This time we go to PC system, Simatic HMI application, and I'm going to write a program for UNCC Unified PC. First thing you need to do, uh, you just need to define your connection. In my case, I'm just using my PC uh, Ethernet port. So I'm just going to add a IE General over here. I'm just going to sign the IP address. Okay. Okay, that's pretty much it for the connection. But as you see over here, the menus, the context menu are exactly the same as uh, when you are programming your HMI panel, so the PC base is exactly the same. You need to define your connection, um, how to connect to different PLCs, but in, in this example, we are going to write um, the first program uh, just as simple with some internal tags. So let's just create some tags. We name them again. Tag one, tag two, tag three, and tag four. All integer and internal tag, all fine. Okay, so next we go to the screen section. We are going to add a new screen, and I'm going to quickly add some sliders and engage to show the value. Okay, maybe let's make it look a little better. So we just add a panel here. Okay. I'm going to send it backward. Okay, it looks good enough to me. So, 
I'm just going to copy and paste this object four times because we have four tags. Okay, so the plan is we are going to connect these to the tags and also I need to push buttons for creating the file for logging the data and also another push button to log the data. And I want to quickly show you how easy it is to change the theme of your so I'm just going to add this okay and maybe a dark mode bright mode extended mode okay that looks good enough to me. Okay, let's go to our tags. So we just created four tags. Let's connect them quickly to these objects. See how easy it is. Drag and drop. Drag and drop. Just to make sure this is connected. Oh, sorry. We want to connect the tag two, tag three, and tag four. Okay, that's pretty much it. So I have to write on a script for this to create a file. And I have already prepared this script and this is purely JavaScript. It's very easy to learn. I'm not going to through the details because this video is getting so long. So just to make it short, I have a folder on my computer on e drive and it's called my log. I will create a CSV file over here and I will write the values over here. This button will create that file. And then I'm going to write the values once I hit that the second button to the file. So I'm just going here. And I'm going to copy and paste over here. Okay, and for the themes. Dark mode. Bright. And this one was extended style. Okay. The last and most important one, not the most, but you have to define your users because uh, you want to define who have access to your uh, machine and who doesn't. Okay, let's just call it admin. We'll define a password for it. And this user is HMI administrator. Okay, everything looks ready to be downloaded. Okay, let's just do a quick compile to make sure we haven't missed anything. As you see, the download page is exactly the same as the panel. You just need to apply some changes and do your load. Let's 
loading completed. Everything is ready. As I mentioned, the WinCC Unified is a web-based technology and all I need to do is just enter in the IP address or the computer name um, and also the URL basically for the runtime of my project and my project will appear on my in my browser. Okay, so I just enter my credentials. Okay, perfect. So as you see here, I have this slider. This is connected to tag one, tag two, tag three, tag four. So let's check the styles. As you see here, very nice and easy way to change the styles as you see here with just one line of code i can just change the design of my project this is the standard extended bright or the dark mode and uh okay let's uh let's see so this folder is empty right now once i hit this button a file will be created as you see here the file has the header it's a timestamp um so let's let's just like these values the current values of these and if you open the file again you see the values the timestamp number 13 16 19 uh sorry 29 and 17 and i can just change the values and hit the log again and you see another or the second record and so on so i think i provided too much information in just one video i just wanted to this video to be a crash course for everyone to get started this vincc unified of course there are too much more to talk about and i'm going to create a different videos for those uh, to make sure you have enough resources to implement your project in the vincc unified platform so i hope you enjoyed this video and feel free to subscribe to my channel if you enjoy the topic related to industrial automation iot industry 4.0 and make sure you put your comment here and help please help me to improve my videos and content okay until the next time have a great day